uh, hello. Uh, I, I must thank you to give me this opportunity to be here. I'm honored, actually. Uh, today, I'm going to speak about maintenance, uh, condition-based maintenance. Uh, of course, I cannot speak about the broad concept of the maintenance because it's so big and so huge. So I just want to speak about some specific parts of it. As an introduction, I must say that uh, today uh, we are surrounded with devices. If you look around yourself, you can find a, a lot of such devices. For example, this, the first one that you can recognize is your personal computer, which enable us to communicate. These devices, uh, or as I may refer to them, these systems, uh, sometimes are so simple and the other, one, the, the other times are more complex. In either case, uh, I should say that our life depends on them. Uh, you, you trust uh, such systems, you rely on such systems, and we prefer that such systems can work for eternally. Of course, it's not the case, and uh, unfortunately, such devices are gonna to to break or fail. Uh, when we are dealing with some simple, or uh, or it, as I can say that inexpensive um, devices, we can wait until the failure happen, and after that, we can uh, decide uh, about the replacement and the repair of the system. Uh, for example, consider the case of a light bulb. Uh, you can simply replace, uh, replace it with a new one. And the only price that you should pay is the price of the buying a new uh, product. Or maybe in a severe case, you should spend a night in a darkness. Believe me, if uh, you, can, you think that this may bother you, bother you, I should say that it's not so important because in comparison with more complicated cases, it's nothing. Just consider an airplane, uh, which if you wait for the failure, uh, maybe such failure causes a crash in a flight. So the price of such deci uh, decision may be uh, paid by the lives of passengers. Or in another example, I can say that uh, the facilities of oil and uh, gas extraction of seabed. In such platforms, if, the, if some part doesn't work properly, uh, the leakage of the oil uh, could, um, could make some problems and uh, that can lead to a catastrophe, at least for environment or animal. Beside of the problem, beside of this problem, actually, uh, the, uh, the cost of the system and the platform are, uh, is down. I mean, that doesn't work properly, is so high. There is a duration that um, the gas and oil cannot be extracted and shipped to the industry or customers. So we should think about the failure before it happens. The other example of such, um, such systems which their breakdown can have uh, great consequences are, uh, for example, dams uh, or uh, power generation uh, systems or even big factories. So these, at this moment, we should think about the maintenance. Maintenance refers to all actions like uh, repair, replacement, and inspections which, uh, which done to a system to restore or re, uh, restore or uh, preserve the system in the condition uh, in the functioning mode. Uh, and when someone are going to speak about the maintenance, uh, must think about which uh, which kind of the action must be taken or when uh, when the maintenance must be done. Someone, when someone is speaking about the maintenance all the time, uh, they're in their, they have uh, some, function, some objective function in their mind. Such objective functions can be cost, which we desire to be reduced, or it can be availability and safety of the system, which we desire to be extended. So in either case, uh, we are dealing with a uh, uh, 
optimization problem in maintenance. Actually, maintenance has a long history, and at the beginning, the, the policies were, were so simple and time-based, but with uh, improvement in the devices, actually in monitoring, monitoring devices, uh, this, the condition-based maintenance uh, became more common. That means condition-based maintenance, uh, that means you, you should think about the actions based on the condition of the system. So if we want to speak about the condition of the system, uh, you should know how to measure the condition of the system. Because of that, the monitoring uh, devices are so important. Here we are going to speak about a preventive condition-based maintenance policy. And uh, uh, so I'm going to speak about some assumptions that are assumptions that uh, I, I have in here in the uh, study. The first assumption that I should speak about is uh, when I'm speaking about the condition based, so I should have an indicator that gives uh, me the inform gives me the information of the condition of the system. Uh, I can say that almost all of the systems suffers from uh, degradation before the failure happens. So if we choose the degradation of the um, degradation of the system as an as an indicator is not a good it, it's a good choice. Such, take, such uh, indicators, let's, let's just uh, denote this indicator with xt, which uh, t is the time and uh, the, the whole xt is the degradation level of the system at time t. Based on the, the behavior of the deterioration, xt is a, a non-decreasing function like as I showed here. The, the blue curve can be considered as a degradation path of a system. It, actually, actually, due to some problem, uh, we can we we are not able to uh, measure and uh, monitor the system continuously. So we uh, we are able to just measure and inspect the system just by some times. For example, in this picture, uh, we can see that there are three times that uh, we, we may refer to them as inspections time. Uh, and in these moments, we go for the measure uh, for measuring the degradation of the system. So here, the amount of degradation is measured here and here. Uh, I should say that uh, here the inspections are going to be uh, instantaneous, non-destructive, and also uh, we should uh, consider that they can reduce the exact amount of regression of the system. So, so you you in the in the reality we cannot see the blue line, just the points here, here, and here. In this consideration. If we want to speak about the failure, we can consider that a, a, a pre-specified threshold level L, which uh, if the degradation of the system crosses this threshold, the failure happens. Also, such happens are not self-announcing. That means that if you want to detect the failure, you should go for, inspect for inspecting the system. Uh, that means if, uh, if a system fails between two inspections, it remains fail until the next inspection. That such duration of time, uh, the, mm, the system uh, is, is going to be failed. In, uh, we, we refer to this time as duration uh, of downtime and the, such duration impose, uh, imposes uh, some cost. And such costs are not desirable for, for us. So we prefer to go for preventive maintenance action. That means that before failure happen, we want to, uh, uh, to know if it's coming and, and do something for it. So a threshold like uh, M, which is uh, known as preventive threshold is chosen. Uh, so after the maintenance, after the degradation of the uh, system crosses this threshold, we can go for the preventive maintenance. Before, so before speaking about the, about the maintenance, uh, uh, preventive maintenance, I should say that 
The amount of M is a decision variable and we should uh, find the optimized uh, value of M. When we are going to uh, just consider that now at the inspection time, uh, for example, T, we, we saw that uh, uh, the amount of the degradation is higher than M. We should decide uh, about the preventive actions. Preventive actions can be considered as replaced and rep uh, repairs. Both of them are possible. Which one is better? I must say that uh, replacements are perfect. That means that they can restore the system to the degradation of the system to zero here. And after that, the system can work like a new one, uh, but for repair, it's not the case. For the repairs, the, the degradation of the, the, the uh, degradation level of the system will uh, restore somewhere here, which we may. Sorry, we may refer that uh, it's imperfect repairs. Uh, always, uh, the 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 price of the repairs are less than the uh, price of uh, replacement. So here we should choose between if the repair is better or the replacement. Actually, it's a trade-off that must be done here. <coughs> so, so here, uh, so it's the, the big decision and it's a crucial decision here, which we are going to speak more about uh, in this study. Uh, I must say that also uh, here we are constantly consider that uh, the the replace and repairs are only uh, can be done at inspection time and not can be done in the duration of inspection. So with this consideration, I'm going to uh, first uh, speak about how I can uh, how we can model the degradation XT and how we can model the behavior of the imperfect main, imperfect of uh, imperfect repairs, and after that go for the decision. Uh, decision rules for maintenance policies. So let's consider, uh, let's uh, start with the, mo with the uh, process. As degradation processes are dependent on time and uh, because the random randomness, uh, stochastic processes are good models, are good choices to modeling them. Here we are going to use the uh, inverse Gaussian process. Uh, that means that uh, the time, the, in, the increments like x t plus h minus x t has an inverse Gaussian process uh, with parameters depend on the duration of the increments, the length of the increments. The PDF and CDF of such increments are uh, depicted here. And also, for the also for the uh, for the for modeling the imperfect repair uh, there uh, actually there are a lot of models i can name at least four mo four models for uh, imperfect repair modeling but here we are using uh, improvement factor modeling in this model we consider that the, the amount of the degradation after uh, the repair uh, which we we are showing here with xtn is uh, the amount of the degradation before just before the maintenance before the repair multiplied by a factor delta is uh, delta takes values uh, between zero and one and uh, <coughs> sorry between zero and one and uh, as uh, you can see in the picture after the repair, the degradation of the systems reduced here, and uh, we, we can say that after that, the degradation level can evaluate like, evolution, evoluted like this. Uh, I must say, that, uh, we consider that it's, of course, it's rational to consider that the, uh, the impact of the imperfect repairs are different with each other. So the delta can be considered as a random variable. Here we are going to choose a beta distribution with shapes uh, alpha and beta for uh, such dis distribution. Then we can find the CDF and PDF of uh, the random variable delta uh, 
such these. And that means that you can find, uh, you can simply find the, uh, uh, the amount of expectation and variance of the delta. These values are speaking uh, or, or giving us uh, some idea about how, the, how efficient is the uh, imperfect uh, repair. For example, if the amount of the uh, expectation is low, uh, we can say that in such pictures, the, 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 the duration of the degradation is so high and always the, uh, the amount of the degradation after the repairs is here. So it, it can be considered as an efficient repair. That means that the uh, a long reduction of the degradation happens. Uh, and also for higher values of expectation is it's uh, in the it's the opposite case the, and the variance uh, is speaking is is speaking about the consistency of uh, such uh, repairs okay so now we are we we have spoken about the modeling degradation and the, how the behavior how is the behavior of the imperfect repairs so we can go for um for maintenance policies and how the decision variables can be done that when we are speaking about the maintenance policies i should speak about the time uh, inspection time i mean i should say that uh, when i should go to inspect the system uh, and I should say, uh, say that at each inspection, based on the amount of the degradation of the system, what action must be taken. Uh, and after that, when the whole uh, decision rules uh, are done, I should speak about the cost of such actions. Let's start with the inspection time. Uh, if we consider that x, uh, if if we consider that t n is the inspection nth inspection time, uh, we can find uh, the the next inspection time with uh, this formula, and uh, m could be a function uh, which uh, gives us the duration between two inspections. Uh, here we consider that m is a, a function which depends on the amount of the degradation at time t n. Uh, and we are going to use the RUL-based uh, RUL inspection uh, modeling. That means that we are going to find the remaining useful lifetime of the system, and after that, going to find the peak quantile of the system, peak quantile of this, this is distribution, and find the next uh, time interval. Here I have some uh, picture to, to say how it works. For example, consider that you are at the time zero and you want to, uh, to uh, decide at which time you should um, inspect the system for the first time. So with the, with, the, um, with the information that we have from the uh, degradation um, process, we can have the RUL of, um, uh, of the time with um, information that we have at time zero. The consider that the RUL is like this. I have the peak quantile of the system. So uh, the time uh, T1 can be calculated like this. And after that, I go for the measuring the degradation of the system. Consider that here is the amount of the degradation of the system. With this new information, I should again find the RUL of the system. Uh, consider that the, the PDF of uh, RUL is like this. I should find the peak quantile. T2 is uh, calculated. Uh, the degrad amount, the degradation amount of the system uh, is uh, uh, measured. And after that, this structure can be uh, repeated to find another uh, degrade another inspection times. Okay, so, so we decided about how we can uh, find the inspection time, but how we uh, what we should do at each inspection time. Let's see what will happen at each inspection inspection times. Uh, I should say that uh, I, I, I will use the notation uh, T minus N uh, as the time just before the, in, before the maintenance 
and x at this time the, to show that the amount of degradation at the time just before the maintenance uh, car to be carried out. Okay. Uh, there actually there will be three uh, different uh, scenarios here. If we go to measure the degradation of the system and we see that the, the amount of degradation amount of the degradation crosses the threshold L, then the system has failed and uh, we should replace it. Uh, after the replacement, uh, uh, the the degradation of the systems uh, is gonna reduce to is gonna restore to zero. And uh, I, we, we can say that, for example, this job, these actions can be done with a price, for example, with this notation. Or maybe you can go uh, to, to measure, you, you, should, you go for measure uh, the degradation and you see that uh, the amount of the degradation is less than M, I mean the preventive uh, threshold. So the system is in a good condition and is working very well. We do, we, uh, there is no need to do anything. And the only thing that can be done is uh, finding the next uh, time of inspections. So it, this kind of action is, uh, has, uh, has a price of CI, which is the price of inspection. But uh, what will happen if the, the, if the amount of the degradation be between M and L? This is a danger area. In this area, we are uh, we are um, we know that the systems are system is going to fail soon, and we should do some some um, some maintenance, preventive maintenance. Which kind of preventive maintenance must be taken here? The the time that we should think more carefully about uh, the decision between repair and replacement. For this decision, we are going to introduce a function like VARP, which I'm going to explain it uh, in detail. Uh, actually, actually, it's important. Uh, actually, deciding between replacement and repair are important because there is two kind of costs. The costs are so different, and also the the efficiency are so different. Efficiency between these two actions are so. Uh, is different. So uh, if we are going to, for example, to, uh, choose uh, imperfect repair, something like this uh, happens. We always want like to have imperfect repairs uh, if it's good. I mean, uh, for example, if in this case, uh, instead, of, uh, instead of having the reduction of the level here, just uh, the reduction of, of level uh, of degradation be here. So that means that you repair the system, but after the repair, again, the degradation of the system is higher than M. And you should do again the preventive actions go and go for the repair. So it's not a good idea to, to uh, decide for the repair at the first place. We are going to decide how we can uh, see such, uh, such such um, um, such such states happen so we don't like this so we, we are going to use uh, to use a function to uh, to estimate such probability we are using such a function as varp which uh, is going to calculate the amount of the the probability which delta multiplied by e is greater than m. Here, the the probability is or is based on the delta. That means that the the, the the random variable is delta, and we are using this function to say that if we if we replace repair the system, uh, what's the probability that after the repair the the repair is not good and it's not sufficient. That means that it's near to the m. We, do, we want to be here near to the zero instead of being to near to the M. So we are using this function uh, here uh, to decide. 
these functions can take uh, takes values between uh, the support of this function is between m and l and the range of the system this function is between uh, zero and uh, varphi at the at the point l for deciding uh, about the repair and the replacement uh, we should uh, as, as this decision is a binary decision, we are going to use a threshold like S, which is uh, which is, can be taken between the possible values of the uh, range of the var phi. And as, um, as the probability of having not a good repair, we are going to, uh, as the probability of having not a good uh, repair is less than amount of S, we are going to choose repair and otherwise we are choosing the replacement. That means that we at uh, each uh, preventive actions before that we take for, uh, before that we are going to take the um, repairs, we should choose if the repairs are gonna work or not. If it's work, we go for the repair and if it's not, we go for the replacement. As you can see that uh, S uh, choosing a, a, a threshold for the, the such probability like S is equivalent to uh, choosing a threshold for the degradation which is between M and L. Okay, so if we are, if we are in the danger area and we are going to choose a, a preventive actions, we are going to do, uh, we are going to uh, make the decision as follows. If we see that Warfi at the point, uh, the amount of degradation at time Tn is gre greater than S, that means that if we do the repair, it could not work and it does not appropriate and, and, and it's not appropriate. So we don't do that and we go for the replacement. Such replacements are, uh, are perfect. That means that can restore system to zero and the, the, the price is C index PR. But if the, the probability of having a good uh, repair is high, we can go for the repair. So in this case, the, the amount of the degradation after the repair is going to be like this and uh, uh, it's uh, it's gonna be uh, uh, it's gonna be a, a, a value between zero and uh, xt uh, n xt n minus. So uh, even in this case may uh, may sometimes um, uh, may happens uh, the bad situation. That means uh, even after the repair, maybe the 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 amount of the uh, degradation will be here. Uh, and we don't like such situations. So after that, we should repair, uh, we should replace the system. This, this kind of the, uh, this kind of the happening, this kind of the um, uh, actions can be done with a price CR plus, which is greater than other prices and uh, can be considered as a CR, which is the cost of the repair plus a plus an extra cost. Okay, it's rational to consider that the costs are like this. That means that the inspections cost cost are less is less than the other cost. After that, the cost of repair. After that, the cost of preventive repair, which we know that the uh, the uh, we should re replace the system. So uh, we we no, uh, we, the, actually the unexpected failure doesn't happen. So uh, the price is less than the corrective uh, replacement, which is uh, take a burden of um, downtime, downtime for us. And after that, the cost of the CR plus that I explained that it's higher than the other cost. Also, we have the cost of the C, uh, CD, which is related to the cost of the downtime. And if we have the cost function over uh, over period of zero to T, uh, we can have uh, something like this. And uh, I should say that M uh, is the number of each uh, actions 
and the dt is the duration that uh, systems uh, passed in the downtime. So here uh, we have um, all uh, we need. We know the modeling of the system. We know the cost function. We know uh, what we should do at each inspection time. So we just the only thing that we can do it's going to um, minimize the cost function. The of the uh, the objective. Uh, uh, that in maintenance is uh, going to be minimized is the uh, uh, long run average cost per time unit, which is defined by this limitation. Actually, this limitation cannot be easily uh, calculated, and always uh, they use uh, some um, some theorems uh, a little bit like. Uh, CLT to say that this kind of uh, limitation can be considered like uh, these uh, expectations. So if we go for finding such expectations, we can go for finding the uh, EC and uh, after that we can um, uh, minimize the cost. I should say that SCA, S1 is, uh, is the first replacement time, uh, that means that the first time that the systems is going to be replaced. Uh, I must say that actually uh, calculating such expectation are not easy uh, for a lot of cases, uh, for a lot of cases, uh, and uh, especially when we are speaking about the theoretical, uh, theoretical uh, calculations, not uh, it's not the case. So, uh, so in a lot of papers and in a lot of studies, they are going to have simulation and NCNC uh, um, simulation for calculating such expectations. But I, uh, but I should say that uh, there is uh, another way to calculate such expectation in theoretical way. Kokoza in 2000 shows that if uh, you sh if you can prove the semi regenerative uh, semi regenerative properties of uh, the degradation process, you can show that the the amount of the uh, the EC can be like can be like this, and of course in this uh, notation T1 is the first inspection time that we spoke about it. Uh, earlier. So in this scenario, we are going to, uh, to calculate the uh, expectation over a shorter period of time. So it's more simpler. But as you, sh as you want something, you should pay the price. Here, you should expect over pi. And why it's pi? Pi is the stationary distribution of the, uh, de uh, the degradation process at inspection time. So for calculating this uh, expectation, which can be calculated, you should, uh, at first you should uh, assess the stationary distribution. So we, let's do this job. For, for this reason, I should introduce a YN, which is the amount of the degradation of the system at the, ins at the nth inspection time. Uh, this uh, YN and we can go for finding its uh, distribution. For finding its spatial distribution, we should first of all find the transition probability. For the transition probability, I must say that uh, Y uh, Y can take two values, two kind of values actually. Uh, either uh, y can be either zero or a value of like y, which is between m and uh, bet between uh, zero and m. Uh, in the case that we can have y equal m is uh, when the replacement happens, maybe in preventive or maybe in the corrective case, uh, or when you have a y, that means that you repair the system. Uh, imperfectly, or uh, that means that you your systems were working properly. Okay, 
So we are going to have a mixture distribution for Y. Uh, for calculating the amount, uh, the, uh, the transition probability, we should uh, calculate such probabilities. And um, for example, when we are going to have uh, zero for Y, when the previous amount of the Y was X, uh, we should uh, calculate such a uh, probability, which I skipped from the, which uh, I, I, I'm not gonna explain the, the calculation because it's too long. And uh, if we are going to, ex to calculate the other part of the mixed, dis mixed uh, distribution, we should think about uh, solving such probability. And with uh, solving such probability, I can have the transition probability like this formula. You can see that uh, there is somehow a mixture distribution. Uh, some in, for some uh, part zero and the, the, the other part, there is another distribution. And uh, I can say that A1 and A2 can be calculated like this we know Q and F from the distribution of beta and the distribution of inverse Gaussian process. Okay, by having the, by having the transition probability, uh, of course we can find the stationary uh, distribution uh, by solving such a stationary equation. Pi is the uh, pi is the distribution that satisfies to this formula and uh, can be calculated like this. Again, it has a mixed distribution, which is rational because the probability distribution has the same uh, structure. So uh, if we want to calculate A and B here, we can choose, uh, we can use such uh, formulas and such uh, formula leads us to the, uh, some not uh, some equation like Volterra equation. Uh, of course, it's not exactly the Volterra equation, but uh, something like that. And we can calculate it numerically. If we calculate it numer numerically, it helps us to have the stationary distribution of the uh, of the stochastic process y n uh, with a short time in a short time. Actually, if we wanted to go to have a stationary distribution with simulation, it takes more time. But you can see that um, the, the, the PDF of the um, MCMC simulated the version and the, the version that we uh, calculated from the formula are the same. The, the blue one are uh, from simulation and the pink one are from the uh, from the formula that we spoke about. So we can see that they are almost the same. I showed that from two, uh, I showed that for two different cases and uh, in two, in both of them, we can see that uh, the, the, the formula works well. Okay. So when we have the, when we have the stationary distribution, simply I can go for, uh, calculating such amount and uh, I, then I can have calculate the objective function. So after having the objective function, I can go for the minimizing the objective function. For the optimization, I should, uh, I should find the amount of S, S star, P S star and M S star, which uh, satisfies in this equation. Uh, Let's just uh, see for a numerical example to, to be more um, illustrated in such decision, decision um, rules and maintenance policies. For numerical part, uh, I consider that uh, the, uh, the degradation, uh, the parameters of degradation process uh, are uh, one, both of them are one, and uh, the the threshold is uh, the threshold level is nine, and of course the the cost configurations are like this. 
uh, the parameters of beta and alpha, which are uh, which are from the uh, variable of delta, can be considered at each um, amount. But here um, we fix the beta to five, and alpha can take different values to show that the efficiency, different efficiency of the repair. If the all if alpha is near to zero, the efficiency of the repairs is higher, and if uh, it takes the greater value, the efficiency will re will reduce. Here, for more uh, graphical um, aim, I can say that uh, I depicted the, the cost function just for two different values of s uh, which is equal zero and which is equal that varp at the time l these two amount of s are extremes values of s in this case when s is zero that means that in all preventive actions we go for the replacement and this means at each repair preventive replacement we are going to repair the system uh, and here uh, we consider that the, the, uh, the delta has a better distribution with these parameters, uh, which means that the efficiency of the repairs uh, is not bad. So you can see that the difference between the all the time replacement and all the time repair. You can see uh, there is not uh, a big difference between the optimal values, which here and here. Uh, this is because uh, this is uh, because the fact that the repair is a good one and an efficient one. That means that repair and replacement are not so different from each other. But consider another case, which delta is uh, de de delta follows beta with uh, parameters five and five. Uh, in this case, the efficiency of the repairs is less than the previous case. And uh, you can see that there is a big difference between the optimal values. Here, the optimal values for the for always repair is uh, the amount of M is much less than the amount of M star for this case. That means that uh, in such case, uh, when the repair is not so efficient, uh, the the better choice is uh, be more conservative and going to repair sooner than uh, it's sooner as soon as possible for example for the degradation level of fives for example but here when the when the repair uh, is not good and replace uh, when the uh, replacement always is taken it's uh, not a problem we can wait until the higher amount of the degradation level Okay, uh, now I should say that uh, this kind of policies that we are ex we explained here, uh, uh, how how such uh, policies works and if it's better than the previ previous one or not. Uh, I should say that by by adding the decision variable s here, I I should say that such kind of policy can be a more general case. That means that if we uh, take different values of S, we can go uh, to uh, have classical decision variables. That, for example, for S equals zero, we have the decision, decision uh, variable, which at each preventive actions only replacement can be taken. And for this case, the, the, for each preventive actions, only repairs can be taken. So uh, I, I must say that adding a this adding uh, the third decision variable makes us to take finer decision and uh, can lead to a better um, outcome. Here for uh, here I can show you how it works. Uh, I compared the, the the I compared the these policies with the policies that always replace replacement and always repair. 
For example, when uh, I'm, uh, I'm comparing with the policies which always replacement, you can see that with the amount of alpha which is less, which means that the efficiency of the repair is high, uh, the, the, the price of uh, the, the increase of the cost uh, is so high, so higher than always preventive almost 3%, 30% better than always replacement. And for the, for the big amounts of alpha, uh, both kind of the policies are the same. For always repair, it's, uh, vice, uh, it's the, it the opposite case. And for the bigger values of alpha, we have better, uh, uh, better, function, better functioning for these policies but always better than the other policies or the same as the other policies. As sensitivity analysis, I should say that uh, the amount of CR and CPR uh, can, um, can have effect on the, uh, on the decision variable. You can see that the amount of S is always uh, the same when the, the costs are different. But you can see that the amount of uh, the amount of the uh, repair and replacement are uh, the opposite case when the CR is uh, going to be uh, going to grow. And here also by increasing the amount of the CPR, we can see that the the, the different uh, actions of uh, repair and replacement. Here, by the time, by such times, uh, the trade-off is taken. And after all, I should say about the uh, I should say about the efficiency of the repair. How the efficiency of the repair can take uh, uh, can uh, can affect the EC. You can see that by the increasing of by decreasing of the efficiency of the system the amount of the ec uh, is going to be greater and uh, that means that if you, we are going to uh, have in efficient repairs we are going to pay more price uh, that's what i wanted to say thank you i I'm open to questions. Thanks, Elham, for the nice presentation. So if there is any question, you could unmute yourself or write it in the chat. So I have a question that, so I see that you use the <clears throat> inverse gamma process. So why not using the gamma process, which is more used in the papers? Mm -hmm. Uh, actually, uh, inverse Gaussian processes uh, are more recent, recently introduced to the maintenance. Uh, both of them are good uh, processes, gamma process and inverse Gaussian process, both of them are good. But you can find papers that say that uh, inverse Gaussian is more uh, suitable to model the degradation process. For example, there are such uh, data sets that you cannot find a good fix, a, a good uh, fitness for gamma process, but the uh, inverse Gaussian process can handle such uh, modeling such degradation so good. Uh, of course, uh, when we are dealing with the uh, Bayesian, Bayesian infer inference, uh, inverse Gaussian can uh, function better than gamma process. Thank you. Is there any other question? Hello, can I ask a question? Uh, thanks, Erham, uh, for nice, uh, great talk. Uh, I, I'm just uh, probably I have a basic question. Uh, so you're uh, just uh, describing this method, and I, I assume it's just an alternative to the pri uh, periodic uh, inspection. So. Uh, so probably uh, the main reason is just reduce the cost if, if the, uh, the case is uh, the maintenance is costly. But uh, I assume there, there might be the other reasons. And uh, if, if it's just the cost, uh, the cost uh, probably uh, if the case is not too much costly, so probably 
we can think of having a periodic uh, uh, inspection or for example you had the example that for example in the flight probably is critical to just look at this so if he wants to compare these two uh, two methods so uh, how we can say that so is it just sometimes using this one or sometimes using the other one as, as I get, uh, you are speaking about the difference between the periodic and aperiodic uh, inspection. You said that when we choose the aperiodic and uh, when the periodic one. Yeah, and, and probably is it just uh, cost related or is there any other factor that we can, we can use to decide? Actually, I, sh I, I should say that it's the cost. It's the cost. You know that the periodic inspections is more easy, uh, it's easier. And uh, at the first, um, when the maintenance was uh, was applied, uh, the the periodic funds was more popular because it's easier and uh, simply you can go for, for example, inspect the system each, each at each month or at each uh, week. It's so simple. But you know that when we considering the periodic one, uh, maybe uh, for uh, for a new systems, uh, you should have more fre frequent inspections at the beginning of the, uh, the life of the system, which means that the system is uh, not old and there is uh, no chance of it getting failed. So you are just uh, wasting your time by inspecting periodically of the system. For example, uh, you may have 50 inspec inspection for a, a new system which is not needed and you can just have one inspections after after for fifth uh, inspections but when the degradation uh, but when the the systems getting old uh, such uh, periodic inspections also increase the am uh, amount of the probability of failure for example if the system's going to to getting old uh, maybe more frequent inspections is needed while I'm fixed to inspecting the system at each week. That means that maybe you lost, uh, the, lost the track of the degradation and maybe the, the, your system will fail in between the inspections, periodic inspections. Uh, at, at, uh, I can say that yes, a periodic inspections can cause higher price uh, but it's more simpler. So in, in sophisticated cases, we go for the periodic case, but if the, if the policy is not so difficult, we can go for the aperiodic maintenance. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other question? So if there is no other uh, question, I want to mm, thank everyone and especially thanks Elham for the nice presentation. Thank you for uh, giving me the chance to be here. I'm honored. Thank you.